Hey guys, welcome to Anchorage, Alaska. I'm Chris, or the Jazz Guy 13 Aviation, and welcome to one of the coolest aviation experiences you can have in the world, the Alaska Milk Run. Today and tomorrow, I'll be traveling down to Seattle, Washington, aboard Alaska Airlines, with six stops in between, which include Yakutat, Cordova, Juneau, where I'll also be staying the night, and then Petersburg, Wrangell, Ketchikan, and finally Seattle. By the way, if you do like my classic full flight video format, I will be uploading a separate video for each segment of this trip, so just to get that out of the way. Now currently I'm near downtown Anchorage, just trying to take in some scenery and uh, surroundings before I head to the airport. And I have to admit, there's really not a whole lot to do around like my Crown Plaza hotel I just stayed at. But there is mountains in the distance and some very crisp Alaskan air and especially some beautiful weather which actually stuck around throughout my whole trip. Which is pretty unusual for Alaska in midsummer as usually it's very rainy and cloudy especially along the spine of Alaska going down the coast towards Seattle. Well, my flight departs in a couple hours, so uh, let's head to Ted Stevens International Airport and uh, Cordova. Welcome to ANC Airport and the South Terminal, where most of the airlines here in Anchorage are located. There's quite a bit of local flavor inside this airport, as you can see from bears and moose and native Alaskan paintings and furs. So it's a really cool experience to fly out of here. And quite a bit of dogs fly out of here as well. But uh, let's check in. And that would be that. Very easy experience. And now let's head to the security checkpoint and gate C7. Post security, here's a Conoco Phillips Aviation Q400 bound for. Kuparuk in northern Alaska and a Beechcraft B-1900C owned by Ace Air Cargo. Here's a Alaska 737-700. It just came in from Dead Horse and the Royal Queen of the Skies out ahead, which Anchorage sees quite a lot of because they are now the number one cargo hub in the world, largely in part to the you-know-what, I can't say. So my gate today is C7, which is located in the C concourse, which has a pretty good view of downtown Anchorage out ahead. And of course you need your hand sanitizer stations, which there's plenty of here. And uh, here's my gate. Do that. Near the conversion of all the concourses, there's a chance to go up on an upper deck and you can have a pretty good view of the lower level below. And there is an eating area up here, but it was closed due to, you know what, but there's some uh, pretty good views. And here's a Alaska 737-900, which is actually what I'll be flying on first down to Cordova. as 
My aircraft was supposed to be a 737-700, but got switched out at the last second. And I did get some pretty good cheesy beer soup. <laughs> and I think walking over here I see something. Yeah, it's a Boeing Sentry E3 with a radar on top. And here's my aircraft, which is N. 237AK and a four and a half year old 737-900ER. Well, it is now time to board, so let's head on down to Cordova. Hi. Hey, how are you? Chris, thanks. I always find Alaska's employees to be one of the nicest, and uh, this trip definitely was like the icing on the cake for that. And welcome aboard Alaska 737-900ER. Up front you'll find 16 first class seats, configured 2-2 across, followed by 24 premium seats, configured 3-3 across, and 138 economy seats to fill out the rest of the plane, also 3-3, and my seat will be 10A today. The seat recline is I mean, pretty normal, and the but the comfiness of the seat is actually pretty good, one of the best in the U.S. And it does have adjustable headrests. I love the native Alaskan designs on the bulkheads and dividers. Really sets the tone for the flight. On the seat back, you'll find the safety card located in the upper literature pouch. Down below, you'll find a universal power outlet and USB port at every seat. A small netted pouch for your personal items. And the legroom is pretty good. Very good. The armrests are a little small, but uh, good enough. Alrighty, folks. Looks like we have everybody on board. We're going to start preparing the aircraft for departure. Please make sure your seat back and tray table are up. Unplug your device power one trick I find if your charger can't fit in the outlet is take a European converter and just use that it'll work as you can see here with my Canon battery charger help us get ready for takeoff by making sure your seat belt is securely fastened your seat back and tray table are up and devices are unplugged from seat power all bags and large items, including laptops, are completely underneath the seat. Out ahead are some Korean Air cargo jets, as well as the North Terminal. the safety information card. Please sit back, relax, we hope you enjoy our 35-minute flight over to Cordova. So, a little history on the Alaska Milk Run as we head to the runway. First off, the term Milk Run actually is used to describe an air route that includes multiple stops along the way. And some other notable milk run routes you may have heard of is United's Island Hopper out in Guam and Hawaii, as well as the Africa Milk Run, both on my bucket list, of course. The Alaska route came to be back in the 1930s, originally used by bush planes and pilots to transport milk, mail, furs, and medicines down and up the coast of Alaska to many isolated towns. Alaska Airlines first used to, to operate the Milk Run routes with 737-400 Combi aircraft, which can hold half cargo and half passengers in their cabins, but recently they switched to the 737-700s and sometimes 800s and the 900 I'm currently on. So that's a little history of the Alaska Milk Run, and now let's take off for Cordova.
Alright, so we just reached our cruising altitude of 23,000 feet. Now there won't be any service on any leg of this flight except the last. But uh, here's a look at the tray table anyways, which is nicely sized. There is free in-flight entertainment on Alaska. Uh, Wi-Fi does cost money, as usual on most airlines. It is a bit uh, less than most, but uh, f there is free texting. And obviously my favorite is the flight map, which also includes information and weather, which you can see it started to rain again in a couple days. There are a ton of movies on board, and not as much TV shows, but still a good amount of TV shows as well. Below that you can find kids genres and games, and lots of other sub-genres of movies and TV shows if you have a specific choice. Before we knew it, the 30 minute flight was just about wrapped up and we already started our initial descent into Cordova. Like most of the isolated towns we'll be visiting on this milk run, Cordova is largely involved in the commercial fishing industry, specifically salmon, and a lot of different species of salmon. And I would probably say most of the people here are involved with fishing in some fashion or other, and usually the Prince William Sound and the Copper River Delta are the two bodies of water most often fished. And by the way, that right there, which we just passed over, is Cordova. The airport itself is actually located out towards the east of the town which has an absolutely amazing approach as you can see past these mountains that are literally at the same level you're flying at which is just crazy passing over the government slough now I hope I'm saying that right which is the very shallow body of water we just passed over and now on final approach for runway 9 at CDV And welcome to Cordova and its population of around 2100 people. So on each leg of this milk run, uh, the plane usually stops and waits for about 45 minutes to deplane passengers 
and then uh, get new passengers and once everybody is off the plane you can move around like I am here and oh that had to hurt oh I did get a chance to get off the plane and film the outside a little bit as well as walk through the cabin and check out the lavatory in the back for a bit which is nice it's pretty it's a decent size a pretty typical of 737s no changing table as usual there's some toiletry items in the bin and the sink and has good water pressure and here's a look at the aft galley which is a pretty nice pretty nice galley But it was about time to now head to Yakutat, so we had to go back to our seats and wait for the new passengers to arrive. I did get this drink back in Anchorage, at, it was a strawberry lemonade. I definitely liked it, as you can see. <laughs> and sooner than later, the new passengers were boarding the plane. There was a few, not a lot. Welcome aboard Alaska Airlines Flight 66 will service to Yakutat, Juneau, and Seattle. As you heard the flight attendant just say, this particular flight will be going to Yakutat, Juneau, and then all the way down to Seattle, which actually makes this kind of a part one for this milk run. If you do want to do what I did and stop at all the six stops on the route, and I'm actually missing Sitka, but if you want to go to all six stops, you do have to stop it probably in Juneau or someplace and spend the night and then pick up the rest of the route from that city. There is no flight that goes to all six stops. So here we go, off to Yakutat. Cordova to Yakutat is about a 30 minute flight, about the same as Anchorage to Cordova. So yeah, that 23 hours is uh, no, not even close. I did test out the Harriet Tubman movie just to see how it works up here, and it worked pretty good. And I checked flight tracker again a few minutes later, and yeah, it was all whacked out. <laughs> We're not going back north, so <laughs> onward to Yakutat. If you guys do want to follow my travels live as they happen, I do post stories on my Instagram, which is the Jazz Guy 13 Aviation. But I do know some of you like to be surprised, so just laying the option on the table.
And just like that, we're already on final approach for Yakutat Airport's runway 11. So just like Cordova, Yakutat definitely attracts the fishing geeks, I guess you could say. I found a ton of people with, uh, you know, you could tell they were going fishing, which is to be expected. They do have the largest wild stock steelhead population in Alaska with the Sitak River, as well as all your salmon, like king salmon, sockeye, pink, and kaho. Alright, welcome to Yakutat Airport, or Yakutat Shackport, as I like to say. Uh, Yakutat has a population of around 660, so I mean, it's to be expected. Uh, it sits roughly 212 miles northwest of Juneau, which is our next stop. And like the last time, we could get up and stretch after we landed and everybody deboarded, which by the way, we're a bunch of fishers. And I really do like Alaska's mood lighting, as you just saw. The scenery is also tremendous here in Yakutat, as all these isolated cities are. But couldn't really have too much fun here, as the passengers already started boarding. Uh, oh man, that looks like a nice place to stay, the Yakutat Lodge. We want to thank you for being mindful of others, maintaining social distance when finding your seat. This was probably the only town that I didn't have service, which sucked a little bit. But at once everybody boarded, the agent came through once again to make sure everybody who's there is supposed to be there. And then she left. And the stairs pushed back. And we are about to head to Juneau, the capital of Alaska. One final thing about Yakutat as we head back to runway 11 is it's actually one of the wettest cities in the US along with Ketchikan which will be the last stop on the milk run. But yeah, so this weather you're seeing right here is extremely unusual which just made this trip so much better. Juno, which is also about a 30 minute flight. All three of these flights are of very similar length, unlike what will come tomorrow. So let's enjoy this last flight today over to the capital.
our approach today is for runway 8 at JNU. We'll be passing over Glacier Bay, followed by Gustavus, then the Icy Passage, Funter Bay State Marine Park, the Favorite Channel, followed by Al-K Bay, before finally turning and landing into JNU. Now, obviously the Milk Run is a big treat for Av Geeks like myself, but really it's a necessity for the people of these small towns because they are isolated that you cannot drive here from Canada or the mainland and the only way in or out is by ship or plane. So it is an extremely important part of these Alaskan towns along the coast. Now this approach is probably my favorite of the entire milk run so I hope you enjoyed some of the views and it'll just get better. If you noticed just a few seconds ago we passed by a glacier which is named Mendenhall Glacier, which you might find in a lot of Alaskan cruise books because it's a very popular tourist attraction here in Juneau. And I was actually supposed to visit it in May on a cruise here, but obviously the C word ruined that and this time I had to go again. So very soon you will see Mendenhall Glacier. I cannot leave this plane without mentioning the crew who were absolutely amazing on this flight. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks a lot. As you see, they were incredibly gracious in allowing me to film some different shots throughout the different towns and throughout the plane. And I just have to say thank you so much. And the next crew was also really up there, as you will soon see. So that will conclude part one of the Alaska Milk Run. That flight will now be going down to Seattle. Tomorrow I'll be going to Petersburg, Wrangell, and Ketchikan before also hitting Seattle. But now I'm going to head to my hotel and to Mendenhall Glacier and to check out some of this beautiful town. So stick around.
welcome to Mendenhall Glacier and Nugget Falls. If you do come here on a cruise or vacation, you definitely have to go to the falls. It is not that far of a walk. I would recommend some good shoes and do bring a jacket. The glacier, you can also go inside of it, but you do need a guide and most of the things were closed here, including that visitor center up there. Now, an interesting story about me getting here and leaving here, I actually took the only Lyft driver in town. There was no service here, so I called him back. He gave me his number, and I waited here as the night started to come for a good, you know, hour. And I was starting to get pretty nervous. There were some uh, very kind folks that offered to take me back to my hotel, but I declined because I thought this guy seemed very legit, So, and he did actually come. But I was sitting around a bear. Yeah, those two people saw a bear. So I was sitting in Alaska with a brown bear nearby for an hour, waiting for this guy. Uh, but anyway, the next day, here we are back at Juneau Airport and about to head on part two of the milk run. I am already checked in for my flights, but I still like to print a boarding pass, and especially for this trip, I just can't go without printing out a milk run boarding pass. It is a very simple process as usual, so five stars. I love the local flavor inside of Juno's airport. They, you got to put the brown bears and the polar bears because it's so, that's what they're known for. After just going through security, we now enter the airside, six gate concourse. That's it. And I decided to head over here to the tavern to uh, have a nice sandwich, a drink, and of course, plain spot. Here's an Alaska Air Cargo 737-700 heading down to Seattle, of all places. Here's a coastal helicopter coming in from probably some glacier or mountain. And there goes the air cargo plane off to SeaTac. Behind that is another 737-700, this being the northern bound milk run, heading up to Anchorage and coming from Petersburg. Juneau is also a big seaplane base, and Alaska seaplanes is kind of just like the coastal helicopters. They go to some pretty remote and weird, interesting places. And now I'm heading to my gate, which is gate two. We we'll won't be boarding soon, but my plane will be arriving very shortly. There goes the northern bound milk run, pushing back, and now taxiing off for Anchorage. And there is my 737-700, which just came down from Anchorage. It is N614AS, which is a 21-year-old plane built in December 1999. And the time has come. It's now time for Milk Run Part 2. Now, during these days, uh, Alaska does board from back to front to promote social distancing. Well, can I... Yeah, thank you. And welcome aboard Alaska 737-700. On this plane you'll find 12 first class seats up front, configured 3-3 across, followed by 18 premium seats, which are the first three rows behind first class and the exit rows, and finally 94 economy seats to fill the rest of the plane, all configured 3-3 across. The cabin definitely feels older as it should the overhead bins are uh, normal sized and you get the classic 737 overhead controls. 
the seat back has a literature pouch up top with the safety card inside. Legroom is pretty good on Alaska in economy. There's also a small netted pouch below for your personal items, a universal power outlet, and a USB port at every seat. The armrests do have a recline button and are kind of small, but the seats do have adjustable headrests and they are quite comfortable. Also found on the seat back is an iPad holder or phone holder which is kind of the replacement for the PTVs. And just like that we're ready to push back for Petersburg. We're happy to have you with us today on Alaska Airlines Flight 324 to Petersburg, Ringgold, Ketchikan, Seattle. Your crew is Captain Martin and First Officer David. I'm Corey and with me are Jenny and Martin. Safety is our highest priority. We appreciate your attention while we share some important safety information. Please give me the safety information card in front of you which shows what to do in the unlikely event of an emergency. Alright, and we're off to Russia. No, not St. Petersburg. Petersburg, Alaska. I mentioned earlier that tourism is big here in Juneau, which it definitely is. Uh, fishing would also be the other big economy here in Juneau, along with various government jobs. But downtown Juneau, which I haven't shown yet, but you will see soon, is located at the base of Mount Juneau with a population of around 32,000. And now here we go, off to Petersburg. So we continue our trek south. Juneau to Petersburg is about another 30 minute flight and we are now cruising along at just 16,875 feet. But I think as you can see the weather is even better today than it was yesterday. It is just incredible. So as we approach Petersburg Airport, we'll be landing on runway 5 from the west, which means we have to circle around and come on in that way. Now Petersburg itself has roughly a population less than 3,000 and is again largely involved in the fishing industry, which is home to Icicle Seafoods actually, specifically Petersburg Fisheries. It's located halfway in between Juneau and Ketchikan, which means our next stop will be a very short flight. And the town of Petersburg is located here on the north end of the Mitkoff Island. So 
something that you'll come to notice if you do the milk run, or maybe you notice here already. A lot of these small shack ports have very short runways, and so there's not a whole lot of room to, you know, glide and have a nice uh, landing. Um, so they're all rough. And so welcome to Petersburg Airport. Uh, just like the last time when everybody deplaned, we got to have the chance to go up and stretch and move around. And I just have to say, this crew again was tremendous. Uh, they let me to get some shots here outside the plane. And I just have to say, there's something about just even stepping out onto this stairway. You're in the middle of nowhere, basically. And if you're used to being in the mainland like me, I mean, this is just crazy. Seeing mountains everywhere around you and basically just a little shack. <laughs> One of the flight attendants, his name's Martin. And you'll come to see you later. He's he's one of the best flight attendants I've ever had. Uh, he p passed out Alaskan Glacier water to the entire cabin, whoever wanted it, which is really nice. And you can see the people are starting to come. And once everybody was on board, the door closed. The stairs moved away. We'd like to walk you for the continuation of Alaska Flight 64. Service now to Wrangell. And the safety demonstration has started with the flight attendants. And the engines start up again. And we will be off to Wrangell next. Which will only be a 15 minute flight. This is definitely the shortest flight I'm about to go on. Just hopped on runway 23 here in Petersburg and we'll be taking off in the direction that we came from. So off we go to Wrangell. And guess what? Yeah, we're already descending into Wrangell. I mean, I swear we only cruised at probably a couple thousand feet. It definitely seemed like that. But anyways, our approach into Wrangell Airport this afternoon will take us over the Eastern Passage, which we're over right now. And we are now on final for runway 28.
Good afternoon and welcome to Wrangell. The local time here is 3.31 p.m. As we taxi over to our gate, please remain seated and keep your seatbelts on. When it's safe to get up, our bus can off that seatbelt sign. Once again, folks, welcome to Wrangell. Hope you have a great rest of your day. If you are continuing on, please remain seated after we finish the planning here. We will begin the boarding process right away. Thank you. And welcome to Wrangell, Alaska. With a population of around 2,300 people, it is located on the northern tip of Wrangell Island. And what a surprise, fishing is the biggest industry here as well. The flight attendant just asked all of us to close our window blinds, but yeah, I gotta film. Here in Wrangell, I just decided to stay in my seat this time, wait out the new passengers, and wait for them to board. Now, Alaska does block middle seats during the Seaward outbreak, but I did have two empty seats next to me for the majority of these flights, which was really nice. Right now, pitch can is, uh, is clear, and uh, temperature is uh, 71 degrees. I stay at catch can. And with the stairs moving back, we're ready for Ketchikan. It'll be about another 15-20 minute flight, so very short, which means low altitude, which means good scenery. So let's head over to Ketchikan. Turning back onto the runway now, we actually will have to taxi down it all the way to the start of 28 where we landed on, as you can see, turn around and then take off for Ketchikan. And as I said earlier with the hard landings, it's the same with takeoffs. Every takeoff on the milk run is pretty much a max force takeoff, even if you're not filled because they're so short, which is obviously awesome for Av geeks. And after a 23 minute flight this time, just a little bit longer than last, we're landing here onto runway 29 here in Ketchikan. Thank you. 
So here in Ketchikan, since they have a secure terminal, Alaska gives you the option to deplane and head inside the terminal for a bit, which I obviously had to. And before I left, the entire flight crew, including the pilots, recommended to me jalapeno popcorn here in, in Ketchikan. It says it's Ketchikan's specialty, they say. So I had to go to this one shop, which I actually met the pilot there, and we got jalapeno popcorn together. Walking around this airport, it kind of reminds me of Juno just a bit, but a little smaller. And one big notable difference between the two is Ketchikan has a inter-island ferry. An airport to city ferry that leaves from Gravina Island or Revilla Gago, Gago Island. <laughs> and it crosses the Ton Gas Narrows Channel with passengers and vehicles. And here's an Alaska 737-800 coming in from Seattle. And we'll head back down there tomorrow morning. I picked up some soup along with the popcorn and now we'll be heading back to my aircraft for the last leg of the milk run. As you just heard the captain, this will be an hour and 40 minute flight, which is the longest. And let me just say, once you get up there to, you know, the normal cruising altitude of planes, it feels pretty weird after, you know, cruising down at a couple thousand feet for multiple flights and them being only 15 to 30 minutes. As I've been saying in every town that we visit here on the Alaska Milk Run, they're all involved in the commercial fishing industry and Ketchikan is no exception. Some other facts about Ketchikan, it has the world's largest collection of standing totem poles. It was named after Ketchikan Creek which runs through the city and has a population of about 8200 people. So I definitely need to come back here, but for now. Off we go to Seattle. of truth. Let's find out if these jalapeno popcorn from Ketchikan is worth the craze from the flight crew. And the verdict? They are excellent. Definitely worth a try if you get to the Ketchikan airport. Shortly into the flight, the flight attendants came by with the cabin service, which as I said at the beginning is the only segment of this milk run that they give you a service. And I got a Vancouver napkin this time. They always give you a napkin from one of their destinations. 
I also got a Biscoff cookie and a small can of Coke. Just about halfway through the flight and we're now passing by the same coastal mountains but these are part of Canada. Towards the end of this flight, I actually went to the back of the plane and uh, to the other side of the plane also and get some other shots. And I ended up talking with Martin. Boy, was he, he's definitely one of the best flight attendants I've ever had. And he actually sent me some footage here for the video, so enjoy. As we approach SeaTac Airport's runway 34 left, I can't help but recollect about what just occurred over the past two days. Not only is the milk run vital to these small Alaskan coastal communities who are cut off from the rest of the world by roads, but it's just such a treat for any enthusiast, whether it is for aviation or winter sports or hiking, fishing, whatever floats your boat. Alaska is truly the last frontier and is one of the most beautiful places I've ever visited and the Milk Run is by far the best aviation-y experience I've had thus far. Thankfully, in all caps, the weather was on my side so I got to really have the full effect that the Milk Run disposes upon you. But even if you do come like during the normal dreary rainy weather, I'm sure you'd still get some feeling of how awesome this set of flights really is. This beautiful Seattle sunset though, uh, <laughs> and the fact that I had two amazing crews and a special shout out to Martin, honestly just topped it off and like I said in Anchorage, was the icing on the cake for this trip. Hopefully the Alaska Milk Run sticks around for another 90 years and more. I know I will definitely be back. Oh yeah. Nice. That's awesome. <laughs> Thanks so much. Welp, 
I really hope you guys enjoyed this short film today and Thanks so much. like I said in the beginning, I will be uploading each segment of this wonderful trip separately in the full flight video format with subtitles and the natural sound. I ended up getting over 4 hours of footage that I had to condense for this video so you'll be sure to see some things I wasn't able to include here. But again, thank you so much for watching and catch you guys on the next one.